Hey, Cool Gray, meat loaf. Everybody has a meat loaf recipe, right? Unless you're a vegetarian, which I am not. My recipe starts with the recipe my mother used that I ate all throughout my childhood. And then over the years, I've made some modifications just because of my own personal taste, because of some tips and things that I've picked up watching food uh, network or cooking channel. I mean, I've done a lot of experimenting and now I have, as far as I'm concerned, perfected my meatloaf recipe. So you probably have one too, and if you do, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Moreover, I would love for you to try this meatloaf recipe. So here we go. It's simple, it's easy to put together. I don't even work from a recipe anymore. I just put this together, put it in the oven, and boom, instant delicious comfort food in an hour. So here we go with my meatloaf. Well, meatloaf starts with the meat. And for this, I have one and a half pounds each of ground chuck and also ground pork. That's my perfect combination. I'm going to make two one and a half pound loaves. I've got some ketchup and some Worcestershire sauce. It's such a fun word to say. Uh, usually I use one egg per pound of meat, so I've got three eggs. Got some panko breadcrumbs. That's a modification I've made because I love the lightness of them over traditional breadcrumbs. And then for my fresh produce, I've got my carrots. This pre-shredded matchstick version is my favorite. It's just so simple. I don't have to peel. I don't have to chop. It's just ready to go. I've got a large onion. I've got some small, these are like petite bell peppers, but you can use one large red bell pepper if you like. And then I've got some fresh flat leaf parsley. So let's get cooking. First thing we're going to do is chop the onion, which I always do triple time because it's so much fun to watch. <laughs> There's no tears when you do it triple time, so that's how I roll. And since we are chopping up a bunch of fresh vegetables, we're going to do it all in triple time. Try to make it as quick and painless as possible. So my onions are going to go in the bowl and then I'm going to chop up my carrots and put them in the bowl. And then I'm going to chop up my uh, peppers and put them in the bowl. So listen to the music for a second while we do that. Well, now I'm ready to add my eggs, which I've uh, just poured right into the bowl. I'm gonna mash it all up with my hands in a minute so I didn't have to beat them. You can if you want to. In go the rest of my liquid ingredients. So here's my ketchup which once again, I'm using my fingers. I love to do that. I've always said, if you're not getting your hands in your cooking, you are just doing it wrong. There's my wish to sear sauce. So much fun to say. <laughs> now we're gonna chop up that fresh parsley. It's a little labor intensive. In fact, the hardest part of the job because you do wanna remove as much of those stems as possible. They do not have a good texture or a good flavor. So take a little time to do that and then give it a good, uh, chop and add it to the mix and that is a good flavor punch. All the uh, amounts are in the description box so you'll know exactly how much of that you need. And now for the most fun of all, you make sure your hands are super clean and then you just mash. Could you do this with a spoon? Of course. Should you? Absolutely not. I'm not kidding. This is how you make meatloaf. I'm serious. It tastes better because all the joy that you're feeling <laughs> while you're doing this gets infused right into that wonderful luscious mixture and your meatloaf tastes better. Once all my uh, wet ingredients are nicely blended and holding together well, I don't want to over mix this meat even though I'm having so much fun. I'm going to add a little salt and pepper to season that meat. And then I'm going to incorporate my panko breadcrumbs. And now I get to have a little more fun. I'm gonna do this just until I've got everything evenly blended and uh, my meatloaf is holding together really beautifully so that it'll be easy to shape into loaves, which is what we are about to do. So as I mentioned, we're gonna make two one and a half pound loaves. I use my broiler pan for this and underneath uh, the, the bottom part of the broiler pan, I coat with aluminum foil, which makes it super easy to clean up later. All that fat will drip down there and I just have to uh, ball up that aluminum foil and throw it away. The top I've just uh, 
helped the nonstick with a little bit of cooking spray. And now I've just divided my uh, meat mixture roughly down the middle. It's never symmetrical, but whatever is. And uh, you'll see that that is holding together really beautifully. I'm patting it in order to get any air bubbles out and to make sure that I feel that the meat is holding together without any help. See how that looks? Now I'm just going to set it down on my pan and begin to shape it into the loaf shape that I want. I don't like my loaves to get too pointy at the ends, so I'm and I don't like it to be too uneven on the top. I like my slices to come out fairly the same all along the way, so I make almost like a squarish oblongy kind of shape. You can make your meatloaf any shape you like. <laughs> make a big heart, I don't know. You can make one long log if you want to. I'm making two loaves because one of these is going to my parents because you need to share the love. All those wonderful veggies in there are really gonna add a flavor pop. A little bit of ketchup is what I use on mine. My husband likes A1 steak sauce on his, uh, but I'm telling you, this is a really bright, flavorful meatloaf. Uh, unlike some other traditions, I don't put any tomato paste or any sort of topping on this. It's amazing just the way it is. So when I've got my loaves shaped just the way I want them, uh, I am ready to pop them in the oven and uh, let them cook. So through the miracle of modern technology, they're cooked! That actually took about an hour. I'm going to use my little meat thermometer thingy trying to show you the brand there. It's not really in focus. Uh, I'm going to test for uh, doneness in the middle of each loaf and for beef and pork together I'm looking for about 160 degrees that will satisfy me and as they sit and rest the temperature will come up another couple of degrees or so. If my thermometer doesn't come up to the temperature that I'm looking for right away, I'll just pop them back in the oven for another five minutes at a time until I reach what I'm looking for. But this looks like it's going to get pretty close. And then we're ready to uh, slice and serve. Here is my wonderful finished product. Look at all of the deliciousness. Can't you just taste it already? Look at that golden brown deliciousness. Serve it warm with some ketchup. It's wonderful cold sliced on some bread as a sandwich, also with ketchup the next day. Sometimes I even put a piece of cheese on it if I'm eating it cold. Um, you can even make a Parmesan out of sliced meatloaf the next day for leftovers. So there's lots of variety. Please let me know in the comments if you try this recipe. I would love to know. Like this video if you did. I would love it if you would subscribe if you haven't already. Check out some more videos. We do cooking and art around here and I will see you next time.